external genitalia, sin, vulva, pudendum. The vulva includes mons veneris, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, vestibule and conventionally the perineum. These are all visible on external examination. It is, therefore, bounded anteriorly by the mons veneris, laterally by the labia majora and posteriorly by the perineum, fig. 1.1. Mons veneris, mons pubis. It is the pad of subcutaneous adipose connective tissue lying in front of the pubis and, in the adult female, is covered by hair. Labia majora. The vulva is bounded on each side by the elevation of skin and subcutaneous tissue, which form the labia majora. They are continuous where they join medially to form the posterior commissure in front of the anus. The inner surface of the labia majora are hairless. The labia majora are covered with squamous epithelium and contain sebaceous glands, sweat glands and hair follicles. Beneath the skin, there are dense connective tissue and adipose tissue. The adipose tissue is richly supplied by venous plexus, which may produce hematoma, if injured during childbirth. The labia majora are homologous with the scrotum in the male. The round ligaments terminate at its anterior third. Labia minora. Labia minora are two thick folds of skin, devoid of fat, on either side just within the labia majora. Except in the Paris women, they are only exposed when the labia majora are separated. Anteriorly, they are divided to enclose the clitoris and unite with each other in front and behind the clitoris to form the prepuce and frenulum, respectively. The lower portion of the labia minora fuses across the midline to form a fold of skin known as fochet. It is usually injured during childbirth. Between the fochet and the vaginal orifice is the fossa navicularis. The labia minora do not contain hair follicle. The folds contain connective tissues, numerous sebaceous glands, erectile muscle fibers and numerous vessels and nerve endings. It is homologous to the ventral aspect of the penis. Clitoris. Clitoris is a small cylindrical erectile body, measuring about 2.5 cm situated in the most anterior part of the vulva. It consists of glands, a body and two crura. The glands is covered by squamous epithelium and is richly supplied with nerves. The vessels of the clitoris are connected with the vestibular bulb and are liable to be injured during childbirth. Clitoris is an analogue to the penis in the male, but it differs basically in being entirely separate from the urethra. It is attached to the undersurface of the symphysis pubis by the suspensory ligament. Vestibule. Vestibule is a triangular space bounded anteriorly by the clitoris, posteriorly by the fochet and on either side by labium minus. There are four openings into the vestibule. Fig. 1.1. Urethral opening. The opening is situated in the midline, just in front of the vaginal orifice about 1-1.5 cm below the Fig 1.1, the virginal vulva, pubic arch. The periurethral ducts open either on the posterior wall of the urethral orifice or directly into the vestibule, vaginal orifice and hymen. The vaginal orifice lies in the posterior end of the vestibule and is of varying size and shape. In virgins and nullipari, the opening is closed by the labia minora but in perus, it may be exposed. It is incompletely closed by a septum of mucous membrane, called hymen. The membrane varies in shape but is usually circular or crescentic in virgins. The hymen is usually ruptured at the consummation of marriage. During childbirth, the hymen is extremely lacerated and is later represented by cicatrized nodules of varying sizes, called the chirunculi mitiforms. On both sides, it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. Bartholin S. gland. The Bartholin's glands are situated in the superficial perineal pouch, close to the posterior end of the vestibular bulb. They are pea-sized, of about 0.5 cm and yellowish-white in color. During sexual excitement, it secretes abundant alkaline mucus which helps in lubrication. Contraction of bulba cavernosus helps squeeze the secretion. The glands are compound racemose variety and are lined by columnar epithelium. Each gland has got a duct which measures about 2 cm and opens 3. Exposition of superficial perineal pouch with vestibular bulb and Bartholin's gland. 
the vestibule, outside the hymen at the junction of the anterior two-third and posterior one-third in the groove between the hymen and the labium minus. The duct is lined by columnar epithelium but near its opening by stratified squamous epithelium. Fig. 1.2. The Bartholin's gland corresponds to the bulbarethral gland of male. Vestibular bulbs. These are bilateral elongated masses of erectile tissues situated beneath the mucous membrane of the vestibule. Each bulb lies on either side of the vaginal orifice in front of the Bartholin's gland and is incorporated within the bulbocavernous muscles. They are homologous to the single bulb of the penis and corpus spongiosum in the male. They are likely to be injured during childbirth with brisk hemorrhage. Fig. 1.3. Perineum. The details of the anatomy of perineum are described later in this chapter cp. 20. Blood supply of the vulva. Arteries. Ah. Branches of internal pudendal artery. The chief being labial. Transverse perineal. Artery 2. The vestibular bulb and deep and dorsal arteries to the clitoris B branches of femoral artery, superficial and deep pudendal veins. The veins form plexuses and drain into our internal pudendal vein, B vesicle or vaginal venous plexus, and C long saphenous vein. Varicosities during pregnancy are not uncommon and may rupture spontaneously causing visible bleeding or hematoma formation. Nerve supply of the vulva. The supply is through bilateral spinal somatic nerves. Anterior superior part is supplied by the cutaneous branches from the ilioinguinal and genital branch of genitofemoral nerve, L1 and L2 and the posterior inferior part by the pudendal branches from the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh S2, 3, 4. Between these two groups, the vulva is supplied by the labial and perineal branches of the pudendal nerve, S2, 3, 4.